We're just days away from the 2019 NHL Entry Draft in Vancouver. It's time for our Director of Scouting, Craig Button, to play the role of GM and make selections for every team picking in the first round. This year has been all about the top two picks, Jack Hughes versus Capo Caco. And it's been a fun debate as both of these teenagers have proven their worth all season long. Hughes, back pass, scores! What a play, Jack Hughes! Oh, it's a Capo Caco! He wants to make a difference in the game, and he does. We'll sit down with the new GM of the Oilers, Ken Holland, as he considers all of his options with the eighth overall pick heading into the draft. In the next 30 minutes, we'll give you everything you need to know heading into the 2019 draft, and it starts right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome inside TSN Hockey's Mock Draft Special. I'm your host, Glenn Sheeler. This is the fastest half hour in hockey. Our TSN Director of Scouting, Craig Button, will make 31 picks in 30 minutes, all but making the actual draft on Friday redundant. He's going to channel 27 GMs who have picks in the first round. Four of them have two picks. All right, no time for pleasantries, Craig. Let's get right to it. New Jersey's on the clock. Who are they taking first overall? Well, let's not have any suspense. Despite there being a lot of debate, Jack Hughes. I mean, when you consider everything that Jack Hughes offers to the New Jersey Devils and a number one center that's elite and electrifying the skating, the hands, the processing speed the imagination he has it all he is the superior player in this draft albeit by not very much but you put him behind Nico Hischer and the New Jersey Devils are set up the middle of the ice for a lot of years to come Hughes is the U.S. development program's all-time leading scorer this will mark the first time in the 51-year history of the modern draft that a non-Canadian is picked num is picked number one overall for a fourth straight year. All right, Craig, it's a foregone conclusion who the <laughs> Rangers will take a second overall, but let's make it mock draft official. Okay, Capo Caco, how's that for you? Right winger. And Capo Caco is a handful. From the top of the circles in the offensive zone down, he can beat you with skill, he can beat you with will. And he can score and he can make plays and he's got that great mind to understand what play needs to happen whether getting open to receive a pass or to make that pass ready to play immediately for the New York Rangers. He'll be a star on Broadway uh, getting picked second overall at Rogers Arena is sure to be a big moment for Kako. However. Uh, you would have to think it would come second to him scoring the 2019 World Junior Championship winning goal for Finland at Rogers Arena in the final two minutes of the gold medal game. Back to Yokohari, a long race shot gets down. People will say rebound, lose it, but they score! Now, one of Kako's new teammates will be Jacob Truba, of course, who was acquired by the Rangers late Monday night uh, by the Winnipeg from the Winnipeg Jets, of course. So the Jets get back their 20th overall pick, previously acquired by the Rangers. So back to the draft, though, the number three pick. Chicago's on the clock. The last time they picked that three, it was Jonathan Taves in 2006. Who are they taking this time around? Well, there could be real debate here. Boehm Byram, who's an outstanding defenseman, projects as a number one, but. They got some defenseman, Alex Turcott from the USA under 18 program. And when you think about Alex Turcott, think about lowercase Jonathan Taze. And you got an older Jonathan Taze. What an opportunity for the Blackhawks to add a player that can play, understanding what it takes from a Jonathan Taze. And then as Jonathan Taze gets a little bit older, he can assume the mantle. Uh, Chicago native Turcot calls being drafted by the Blackhawks a childhood dream and a reminder that in his combine interview Cole Caulfield told the Hawks that if they pass on him they will regret it. Meanwhile next up is Colorado with that Ottawa Senators pick could have been first overall but no here we are at number four from the Matthew Shane deal. Of course they uh, selected Kale McCarr a brilliant defenseman a couple of years ago. Do they go with a D-man again here or what do you think with Colorado? I don't think they go with a D-man. They're, they're in good shape there. Kirby Dock centerman from the Saskatoon Blades six Six foot four, rangy, really good playmaking player. And consider this he gets to play behind Nathan McKinnon, 
you talk about a really good spot not only for Kirby Doc, but a one-two punch that makes life very difficult for Western Conference opponents exactly what the Colorado Avalanche can use. And Doc would be the first Canadian taken in this draft. Up next, the LA Kings at number five. Uh, their first of two first rounders. Who do they take at five? Well, you got to understand Rob Blake's he's running up to the stage at, at sprint <laughs> speed to draft Bowen Byram, the defenseman. And everything he does, he checks every category of number one defenseman, defensively, offensively, and understanding how to take advantage of those skills. And he's got an edge to him. He will compete and Along with that competitiveness is also a confidence level, and it's not unfounded. Boy, you start to think about a team that's drafted forwards in the last number of years. Mm -hmm. What an opportunity for a number one defense. And, of course, the Kings just bought out Dion Phaneuf, so another slot there maybe uh, in terms of defense. And Boehm, uh, Byron, rather, the first defenseman in uh, the history of the WHL to lead the playoffs in scoring this year, 26 points in 22 games. So let's review 1-5. to five. Noteworthy that this will mark the fourth straight year a Finn is selected second or third. An amazing achievement for a country of fewer than 6 million people. Okay, Craig, start us off with picks 6 and 7. Detroit, then Buffalo. Detroit, Trevor Zegras from the U18 program. Pure playmaker to go along with last year's number 6 pure goal scorer, Philip Zadina. And for Buffalo? Well, it's Cole Caulfield, the best goal scorer in the draft, bar none. And the way he scores goals is tremendous. He's an elite goal scorer, and he does it in all manner of ways, but the brilliance of it stands out on the ice. And when you understand how to beat obstacles and break down goaltenders, that's what he does. And, you know, when you consider that you look at him, best inch-for-inch inch goal scorer in the draft, <laughs> 67 inches tall, 72 goals, making him the only player in the draft averaging more than a goal per inch of height. That is pretty impressive. Now, Edmonton is the first Canadian team picking at number eight. Ken Holland's first time at the helm there with the Oilers, of course, but it's the 10th time in 11 years that the Oilers are picking in the top 10. Now, conventional wisdom says the Oilers might need some wingers to play <laughs> alongside uh, McDavid and Dreisaitl. How? What do you think Ken Holland's thinking here? Well, I'll tell you what. I debated between Matthew Boldy and Philip Broberg, an elite skating defenseman. Boldy reminds me so much of Miko Ranton, and you think, what a great fit. Mm -hmm alongside McDavid, but Philip Broberg, the, the top-end skating defenseman, and he played in the All-Svenskin for AIK this year, and you're a 17-year-old player, there's going to be uh, limited opportunities to be offensive, but when you watch him in his age group, his ability to command the game in every single area, beat the pressure defensively off the forecheck, jump into transition, and when he gets opportunities offensively, Number one defenseman, potentially number one. He's certainly a top pair defenseman. Don't come along. Ken Holland has a pretty good history with a guy by the name of Nicholas Lidstrom, another Swedish True. defenseman. Broberg to Edmonton. Uh, Broberg, though, ranked number 16 on Bob McKenzie's final draft ranking. So that would mean that he would move up eight spots in the rankings if Ken Holland and the Oilers do take Broberg at that spot. And we'll get Ken Holland's thoughts on that pick <laughs> just a little bit later in the show. All right, let's keep the draft moving. And up next, it's the Anaheim Ducks, Craig. Who do you think they're taking at nine? Dylan Cousins. Uh, big centerman from the Lethbridge Hurricanes. And when you consider that he will be the third Canadian chosen, I think he's best suited to be a winger in the NHL. But if he ends up being a center, there's nothing wrong with a big guy that can skate and compete like Dylan Cousins does. And Cousins will be the highest ever drafted UConner. Only two other White Horse natives have played in the NHL, Pierre, uh, Peter Sturgeon and Byron Baltimore, and they played a combined eight games. All right, up next, it's the Vancouver Canucks, the host team of this draft, and they've really had some tough luck at drafts of late. Dropping in draft order for an unprecedented four straight years from three to five in 2016, from two to five in 2017, from six to seven in 2018, and now from nine to ten this year. Who will the hometown fans see Vancouver take here at pick number 10? They dropped from two to five and ended up with Elias Pettersson. Oh that boy, didn't that's, hurt. That, that's really <laughs> tough, right? Matthew Boldy. Miko Ranton and Clone, the ability to carve out space with his body. He can play a speed game. He can play a skill game. He can play a power game. They draft Quinn Hughes last year to bolster the blue line. They have Patterson. They have Horvat. They have Besser. Now Boldy adds to an impressive forward group, and he can play the game any way you like. And a reminder that time moves quickly, and it was now 20 years ago that the Sedins were drafted by the Vancouver Canucks. Two franchise champions. Changing picks. Daniel, second overall, and twin brother Henrik, third after that.
So let's review picks six through ten. Craig has five Americans and three Canadians going in the top ten overall. All right. When we come back, Oilers new GM Ken Holland will join us. Plus, Craig will take us through picks 11 to 20, which now include Winnipeg at 20, thanks to that Jacob Truba trade late Monday. TSN Hockey Mock Draft is brought to you by Golf Town, your experts in everything golf. Golf season is officially here, so put away your stick and dust off your clubs because now we golf. Our mock draft special continues. We're at pick number 11, and the Philadelphia Flyers have been pretty busy in recent drafts. Four first-round picks in the last couple of years and some big names. Nolan Patrick, Morgan Frost, even Joel Farabee. Who do they take at 11 in 2019? Moritz Cedar. Big, heavy, right shot defenseman. He's a perfect complement for what the Flyers already have. Skilled defenseman. Rounds out the blue line nicely. The Cedar will be the first German-born and trained blue liner picked in the first round. How about 12 for Minnesota? Peyton Krebs. The ultimate successor to Miko Koivu plays a game very similar to Koivu. Krebs was the number one overall pick by Kootenai in 2016. That franchise is now relocated to Winnipeg this season. At 13? Spencer Knight. The potential to be a franchise goaltender. There's not any goaltenders in the Panthers system. Uh, Knight would be the first goalie chosen in the top 20 since Vasilevsky went 19 to Tampa in 2012. Then you got the Coyotes at 14. Alex Newhook. The Coyotes need offense, and Alex Newhook is the answer all the way from Newfoundland. And he would be the first uh, Newfoundlander chosen in the first round since Daniel Cleary in 1997. That brings us to the Montreal Canadiens. Not really a secret what they're looking for. A left defenseman and a couple of guys still on the board. It's Mississauga's Thomas Harley and USA U18's record setting Cam York as well. Thomas Harley from the Mississauga Steelheads. He reminds me so much of Thomas Shabbat and he oozes offensive confidence. Excellent skater. Jumps into the offensive zone and he, when he gets in there he can make plays. He can shoot the puck and he becomes a real force when you consider that the Montreal Canadiens drafted Alexander Romanoff last year in the second round and now last year with their center ice position getting really corrected and mm -hmm. moving in the right direction this just adds now to the shelf and the prospect covered for defensemen a real good pick in Harley yeah what a difference a couple of years has made for Mark Bergevin and his staff in Montreal meanwhile we review picks 11 through 15 and yeah new hook he earned eight points in the team's second last game of the season to reach 102 points and then he sat out the season finale all right Craig let's keep it going at number 16 Colorado on the board once again Vasily Pod Colson from Russia I've had Vasily as high as number three but have some reservations about his skatings but make no mistake about it he's a bulldog winger uh, George McPhee and the Vegas Golden Knights at 17 who do they take Arthur Kaliev the second best goal scorer in the draft Vegas gets a dandy at number 17 and then you have Dallas at 18 Philip Tomasino from the Niagara Ice Dogs gets one of the best skaters in the in the uh, Ontario Hockey League. And now here we are at pick number 19 is the Ottawa Senators and the first round pick that they acquired from Columbus in that Matt Duchesne deal. A deal that was pretty <laughs> disastrous all around. So is there a player here on the board that they could take that would make this feel a little bit better for Sens fans? Victor Soderstrom from the Swedish Hockey League, Brinus. And you consider he's a precision finesse type defenseman. Passes the puck really heady, understands where to get the puck and Gets it there at the right times. A power play type player. But when you consider they have Shabbat. They traded for Eric Branstrom. They drafted Jacob Bernard Docker last year in the first round. And now you get Victor Soderstrom. Top four defenses are built in this manner, and they have the makings of having a very good one in a number of years. Yeah, they're definitely rebuilding the blue line quite nicely in Ottawa. Soderstrom would represent a fourth first-round defenseman pick from the last four drafts in the Sens organization. Thomas Shabbat, Eric Brandstrom, plus right defenseman uh, Jacob Bernard Docker, and now Soderstrom. So now up next is the Winnipeg Jets. They reacquired their own number 20 pick after trading it for Kevin Hayes, but then they trade uh, Jacob Truba and get Neil Pionk back. So who makes sense for the Jets here Craig well, the scouting staff has to be ready for these types of trades mm -hmm. and they are Connor McMichael from the London Knights and when you look at the Winnipeg Jets lots of defensemen in the prospect pool they traded for a number two center at the last two trade deadlines Connor McMichael checks so many boxes he can skate he adds offense and ultimately can play in that position behind Mark Shifley a player that is very versatile 
to me, a nice fit for the Winnipeg Jets. And McMichael was just a model of consistency this past season, never going more than two games without a point. So as we know, there will be trades on draft day. There always are, anywhere from three to eight over the past five drafts. The vast majority of those deals, more than 70%, involve picks 20 and higher. The 1969 uh, year marked the first time that all incoming players were available to all 12 teams in the draft. It also marked the last year Montreal had rights to the two best French-Canadian prospects, Houle and Marc Tardif. Among the most prominent players taken that year, number 10 pick Jim Rutherford, then a 20-year-old Hamilton Red Wings goalie. And Craig Jim Rutherford, of course, now the GM of the Pittsburgh Penguins. He's traded away his first-round pick four straight years. Assuming he keeps it this time around, <laughs> who does he take? Raphael Lavoie is a big-body goal scorer who will in time be a great power play asset for the Penguins. At 22, Toronto traded their pick to the LA Kings, and now they will take Cam York. A second defenseman to go along with the number five Bowen Byram. In one fell swoop, they can set up their defense for the next decade. The Islanders need strength down the middle. Samuel Poulin is just what they need. At 24, to the Nashville Predators, Ryan Suzuki, a playmaking center, needs skill in that group. And at number 25, Bobby Brink. Bobby's middle name is Orr. Bobby Orr Brink. <laughs> and his two younger brothers are named after Maurice Rocket Richard and Henri Richard. Now, Ken Holland's rival GM in Alberta has been very busy in recent drafts. Yes, Brad Tree living the past couple of years. He's made a significant trade on day one or two in the past four drafts, acquiring Dougie Hamilton in 2015, Brian Elliott in 2016, Travis Hamannick in 2017, and then trading Dougie Hamilton in a five-player deal that netted Calgary, Elias Lindholm, and Noah Hannafin. So, Tree living uh, traded away his first-round pick in 2015 and 2017. Does he keep it here? And if so, who does he pick? He could trade it, he could keep it. But if he keeps it, to me, Prince Albert's big right winger, Brett Leeson. When you look at what how Brett has progressed in his play over the last number of years, it, it really is impressive. To a player that wasn't drafted in the two previous drafts, to Canadian junior team, to a top performer. And when I look at Brett Leeson, he's closer to playing in the National Hockey League than further away. And what a fit he could be with Michael Backlund and Matthew Kachuk on that right wing. Yeah, 20 years old. He's the oldest elite prospect in the draft. He's been through a couple of drafts. Brett Leeson at 27, Tampa Bay. Jamison Reese, we have an annual tradition of comparing one player to a Swiss Army knife in recognition of his utility and versatility. Sarnia's Jamin Reese is this year's player. Carolina's next, and their owner, Tom Dundon, has told management, never pick a defenseman in the first round, so it's going to be a forward, Craig. Well, that'll be Braden Tracy, the rookie of the year in the WHL, and he has silky smooth skill. How about at pick number 29? Ryan Johnson, elite skating defenseman. And by the way, he happens to be from Anaheim. And we're at pick number 30 now. Who do you think the Boston Bruins are taking? John Beecher is one of the best skaters in the draft, and he fits in well as a succession plan for a team with two star centers in their mid 30s Patrice Bergeron and David Krejci. All right, wrap it up for us at number 31. Nolan Foote will be the third member of the Foote family selected in the NHL draft, following in the skate prints of Father Adam in 1989 and Brother Cal in 2017. Always nice to have those bloodlines. All right, we're back to wrap the show up after this. TSN Hockey Mock Draft is brought to you by Golf Town, your experts in everything golf. Golf season is officially here, so put away your stick and dust off your clubs because now we golf. Free agency just around the corner, and you know TSN Hockey will be all over that. It's free agent frenzy. We are on the air Monday, July 1st at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. All right, Craig, let's recap the players you have Canadian teams picking in the first round. Of the six Canadian team picks, who has the greatest potential to be a difference maker? You know, really good players, but for me, it's Matthew Boldy. And when I compare him to Miko Rantanen, he's got all those attributes and skills. And it's shaping up to be a monumental year as well for Team USA's U18 team. You have eight players going in the first round. They never had more than three. This has been a generational team. We know Hughes at the top, but it's a terrific group of players. I trust that you're going to be 100% accurate <laughs> on this mock draft. So the folks at home, you don't even have to watch the actual draft on Friday. For Craig Button, I'm Glenn Sheeler. And for everyone else behind the scenes here that works hard on a show like this, thanks for watching TSN Hockey's Mock Draft Special.